Chapter 13 Elephants and Teacups But Uncle had to wait for his tea after all. He had forgotten that there was something in the way. And when that something happens to be an elephant, well, it is rather hard to dodge. They had just turned the corner by the old bear's den. There were some brown bears here too, and they were begging just as hard as their brothers on the maypin terraces. One wicked old rascal on his haunches even kept rattling a loose bar in his cage to draw their attention. Then the elephant appeared, and Uncle slid onto a chair with a look that said as plainly as possible, I know what's going to happen now. No tea for a long time yet. The elephant, as he came shuffling along the walk, took not the slightest notice of him, but he took a great deal of notice of the children. And especially of Joan. There were children all around him, and children all over him, but Joan was the one he singled out. Was it, she wondered, that he liked her new coat? Not a bit. She carried a paper bag. Now you can look at pictures of elephants by the hundred, and you can look at elephants themselves from a safe distance. But until you get a great, long, curving, twisting snout with wet lips, two hairy nostrils and a slippery sort of finger right under your face, you can never know what you will do. Joan drew back with a start and would have run away had not Phil been by her side. It's all right. He won't hurt you. Give him one. Joan attempted to do so, while the great brute waited expectantly. But Joan was a long while. Perhaps she was frightened and nervous. Perhaps. Before she knew what was happening, something cold and clammy came against her hand, and the entire bag was sucked up as if by a vacuum cleaner. The keeper prodded the elephant with a steel hook, and he passed on. A wisp of paper on the path was the only evidence of what had happened. The greedy thing, said Joan, eyeing his broad back rather ruefully. But isn't he a deer? I believe if you had looked right into her mind, you would have found that she was really rather pleased that he had taken the lot. It isn't so easy as you'd think for a tiny little girl to feed buns to a great big elephant, one at a time. But a moment later, she was sorry. For after the big elephant came, a little one, if any elephant can be called little. Kit said he was a baby one but she wouldn't have cared to nurse him very long. Oh, the darling, cried Joan. I'd much rather have given them all to him. Uncle called. He was still on the row of seats that bordered the path. Suppose you girls sit down and rest a minute while Phil and Wally get the tickets. The tickets? Yes, you want a ride, don't you? Which is it to be, the big elephant or the little one? Oh, the little one, please, Uncle. I'm bad friends with the big one. The great African elephant had turned, and as she spoke he lurched by again. His eyes said as plainly as you like, Dear me, now, why are you bad friends with me? I'm a splendid fellow, really. Well, said Uncle, the only question is whether the little one, as you call it, it's an Indian or Asiatic elephant. We'll hold you all. I vote we get the tickets anyway, said Phil. 
and get on the first one that's empty. It's like catching a motor buzz. You have to be sharp. Yes, said Uncle, who was still thinking about his tea. And you'd better stand in a row with all those other children and wait your turn, or else you'll never get on. They had their ride eventually, and it was splendid fun. Kit at first was afraid to get on, unless Uncle came too. But when Phil said she could come with him on the little one, there were just two places. She was quite happy. Joan, after all, had to go on the big one with Wally and Alice. They enjoyed themselves ever so much, though Joan thought the ride was a very teeny one considering the size of the elephant. I don't know, said Wally, who had been thinking over what Uncle had said at lunchtime. How would you like to give rides all the afternoon? Especially when it's so hot. I should jolly well throw everyone off and run my tusks into them. He looked quite fierce as he spoke, and Kitty was more than ever pleased that Phil had gone with her. Certainly when you looked at the elephant's eyes, even the baby one, it was rather sly and wicked. And suppose he had upset them. Uncle laughed when they told him what had been said. Oh, the elephant is a very good sort on the whole, and I don't think you need be afraid of him. Here, anyway. But he can play some nasty tricks. Once, when I was in South Africa, he looked at his watch. There I was, just going to start a yarn. But it must do another time. I've talked enough today. Besides, I want my tea. They had to wait a little while, even then, because there was just such a crowd. But presently, they secured a jolly little table right under a tree. It was not until everyone had nearly finished that Joan looked up suddenly and said, with a frightened gasp, Oh, Uncle, what's the matter? Uncle had gone very pale. His face was drawn. And his eyes looked as though he had not slept for nights. Oh, nothing. I'm a little tired, that's all. You see, I'm something of an old croc. And what with the heat and... Phil could have punched his own head and everybody else's. How thoughtless and selfish they had all been. Not once during the day had they remembered that Uncle was hurt and only just out of hospital. We're all very tired too, said Phil, with a sort of mind what you're about glance round the table. I vote we get home as soon as we can. And they wouldn't stop to look at anything as they walked along to the gate. Just as they reached the turnstile, where it says, out, Uncle turned his head and said, I wonder whether it has occurred to anybody. He paused in that funny way of his. What? they all asked. That we came here to study the manners of the leopard. And we haven't even seen him. No, from everybody. And Wally will remember that we've not only missed the lions and tigers feeding time, but the otters and the diving birds. And a ride on the camel, chimed in Kitty. And scores of other interesting sights. As far as I can see, we'll have to... Come again, they all shouted. They had waited so many times for him to complete the sentence and it seemed that he had been waiting for them. If you'd like to, began Uncle doubtfully. Yes, please, said Phil for everybody. It's been lovely. Thank you ever so much, Uncle. So all the way home, though they really were tired, they talked less about what they had seen than about what they meant to see.